Hello everyone, my name is António Ramírez, I'm a PhD student on the Music Technology Group of Universitat Pompeu Fabra in Barcelona, and I'm here presenting you my work on neural percussive synthesis parameterized by high-level timbral features. This work is done together with Priti Shenna and Xavier Favori and under the supervision of Emilia Gomez and Xavier Serra. Percussion is one of the main components in music and is normally responsible for a song's rhythm section. Classic percussion instruments create sound when struck or scraped. However, new electronic instruments were developed for generating these sounds either through playing pre-recorded samples or through synthesizing them. These are called drum machines and they became very popular for electronic music. With the development in digital audio technology and computer music, new drum machines were hand designed using expert knowledge on synthesis techniques and electronic music production. Alternatively, producers can rely on pre recorded drum samples available online and start their own collection of drum sounds. Unfortunately, this can lead to messy libraries with too many sounds which the music maker won't have time to listen to. This might lead to frustration and destroy the musician's desire to, to make music. With the success of deep learning, several innovative uh, generative methodologies have been proposed in recent years. In the context of music, these have shown success, especially in created pitch and instrumental sounds. Ensynth was a pioneer work which enables sound morphing between instruments using the WaveNet vocoder. This achieves a high quality sound, but is very resource intensive. Alternative architectures have been proposed based on GANs and on VAEs. However, for the synthesis of percussive sounds, the work is scarce, where the most relevant work is the neural drum machine. This work uses a conditional Wasserstein autoencoder, which is trained to reconstruct the drum sounds it was trained with. The model learns a latent space, which is unstructured. The user is presented with a low-dimensional representation of it, obtained through PCA. These parameters are abstract and are not shown to be perceptually relevant or semantically meaningful. In our case, we wish to directly map a chosen set of features to the output sound. The WaveNet architecture has been shown to generate high-quality waveforms when conditioned on input features. However, the autoregressive nature of the model makes it resource-intensive and the short nature of percussive sounds do not require the use of a long temporal model. Therefore, for our study we decide to use the WaveUnet, which has been shown to effectively model waveforms in the case of source separation and follows a feedforward convolutional architecture, making it resource efficient. For our end goal, we require semantically meaningful features that can allow for intuitive control of the synthesizer. We chose to use the timbral features proposed by Pierce et al. The timbral features we used are the brightness, the hardness, the depth, the roughness, the boominess, the warmth, and finally, the sharpness of a sound, together with the sound envelope. These are all features which music makers are able to understand despite their music production knowledge. We curated two datasets in order to train our models in two different scenarios. The first one was created by collecting 5000 kicks from our personal collections, which came from commercial libraries. These sounds have high quality and only contain one event. A second dataset was collected by browsing Freesound with the name of Percussive Instruments. Freesound is a website which hosts a collaborative collection of Creative Commons licensed sounds. We selected sound which had a maximum effective duration of one second and we manually selected the sounds that they had decent quality and that they only contain one event. This created a dataset of 10,000 sounds, which we have uploaded to Zenodo. Now I'll detail the model we used. We aim to model the probability distribution of the waveform as a function of the timbral features and the time domain envelope. 
We use the wave unit and as an input we concatenate the envelope and the timbrel features. We downsample using a series of convolutions of which try two. Each three layers we double the, num the number of filters. A total of 15 layers are used in the encoder, leading to an embedding size of 512. This is then upsampled in the decoder using linear interpolation followed by a convolution. We then train the model with three different loss functions. The first one we tried was a simple reconstruction loss and we'll call this model the wave model. Secondly, we tried the reconstruction loss plus the short time Fourier transform based loss that used the full spectrum. Finally, we use uh, the reconstruction loss coupled with the STFT based loss only for high frequencies, frequencies above 6, 650 Hz. We tried this last loss because it seemed to us that the model was not being able to correctly model the high frequencies of the drums. To pre-process the audio, we downsampled it to 16,000 Hz. We removed the silences at the beginning and the end of the sound, and we calculated then the timbral features and the envelope. We then zero padded the sounds to 16,000 samples, which corresponds to one second. To train the network, use the Adam optimizer and train the networks for 2,500 epochs using a batch size of 16. In order to evaluate the timbral feature coherence of our synthesizer, we selected all the sounds in the validation set and we changed the value of each feature without changing the others to 0 0.2, to 0 0.5 and to 0 0.8, a low, a medium and a high value. As an example, we would select a sound from this validation set, we would set the boominess to 0 0.2, 0 0.5 and 0 0.8 in the synthesizer, and then we verified using the same feature extractor we used for the analysis the different error types. Error 1 occurs when setting a high value in the synthesizer did not make it have a higher boominess value than for the low value. Error 2 verifies if the feature generated by the high value was bigger than the generated by the medium value. Finally, error 3 verifies the timbral feature coherence between the medium and the low values. Given the absence of a suitable baseline system, we decided to use an online A-B listening test that compared the models amongst themselves and a reference for subjective evaluation of quality. The participants of the test were presented with 15 examples from each of the datasets. Each example had two options, A and B, from two of the models used for the dataset, along with a reference ground truth for the audio. There were five examples each from each of the three pairs. The participants were asked to choose the audio clip which was closest in quality to the reference audio. A clear preference for the high model can be seen, especially for the Kicks dataset. This can be attributed partially to the choice of cutoff frequency used in the model and partly to the diversity of sounds in the free sound dataset. We note the difficulty in assessing audio quality over print text and we encourage to visit the demo to listen to the audio samples for assessment. Let's start with a high model for the Kicks dataset. Now we will switch to the high model for the free sound dataset.
Finally, let's listen to the free sound model with the full spectrum loss. On this work, we created a dataset of 10,000 percussive sounds. We proposed the feed-forward convolutional neural network for percussive sound synthesis, which is conditioned based on semantically meaningful features which music makers can understand. We verified that these control features indeed modify the sound as desired, and we assess the sound quality through an online listening test. That's it for now. Thank you very much for your attention and I'm looking forward to your questions. Thank you.